welcome everyone. For those uh, who were hanging out with me earlier, I am so glad that you're here. And for those of you who are joining me on Facebook and on YouTube, either live or on replay, uh, we have a really cool topic to cover. And in fact, this topic was suggested by someone who viewed one of my previous live streams. In all honesty, I forgot who it was. So if this was your suggestion, thank you so much uh, for suggesting this as a live stream topic because it just never came into my brain <laughs> to do it. So I love conversations like this, being interactive with, with you guys, either here or with my Manifesting Code members or with my Feng Shui 2021 members, so that I know what topics you're struggling with, um, and then I can make the content to suit that. Now, with that said, in a public forum like this, a live stream on social media, I can really only do generalized things. Okay, so today we are talking about how to use plants for feng shui. And I'm going to give you some tips and techniques for very, 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 very generalized methods. Okay, but I'm of the camp that something is better than nothing. So today we are talking, we will be talking about how to use plants to attract wealth and how to use plants to attract relationships as well. So uh, is my YouTube live working? Uh, I believe so. I have people on YouTube watching, right? <laughs> but let me double check. Let me double check. Yeah, I am live. All right. So Tina from Kenya, welcome. Okay. I've got my notes here. So if I'm looking off the side, it's because my computer screen is over here, just in case. Okay. So most of you guys who follow feng shui, you know that there are five elements in feng shui, right? Earth, metal, water, wood, fire. Five of these elements. And... I practice different schools of feng shui, but one of the more mainstream and really the basis of my, my, my feng shui consulting business is using flying star feng shui. And, um, or even, even other uh, met school of met or methods of feng shui also use these five uh, elements as well. Now, wood is where plants come in, into play. So right now, we're, I'm not talking about external feng shui. I'm only dealing with internal feng shui right now, okay? Because we don't have time to, to talk about external stuff. Um, if you want, there are certain auspicious energies for wealth and relationships that you can increase with wood element. And in this case, we are going to use plants, okay? I will be going a little fast and furious <laughs> today. So first things first, uh, and, and, and I'm gonna be showing you a couple of examples that I have here and why these are the plants that, that I choose, okay? So first, let's talk about plants for wealth. And again, these are very, these are like very basic stuff, okay? So whether they work or not, Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, in all honesty, because they are so generalized um, that the results can be a little bit diluted, right? The more advanced you go in terms of feng shui methods, the more it is suited to your home, uh, like in terms of the, the facing of the home, how many degrees on the compass, the more, the more laser focus it is on that degree, on the compass, the better the results it will be, okay? And those of you guys, I'll talk about my feng shui video uh, school series in a bit, but this is just basically the caveat in that you can follow the tips here, and these are the tips that I have chosen to share with you guys today because it is the most generalized and also the safest one to do. If you do this wrong, you are likely not going to 
um, get yourself into too big of a trouble. You might get a little bit of a hiccup or maybe like a medium hiccup, <laughs> but nothing that's going to be something that you can't come back from. The deal with feng shui is real feng shui is not easy. And real feng shui is actually got many layers of things that you need to, to look at. Those who have taken my Flying Star certification course, you, you understand now what I look at when, when I go through information of a space before I even talk about recommend, recommending anything, right? There's so many things, so many factors that you really need to look at before you do the more advanced feng shui. And those things, when you do something wrong, or even the less advanced feng shui, when you put the wrong elements in the wrong spot, you can trigger negative uh, situations. And that is why many of you guys who, especially who have followed uh, fast food feng shui or even flying star feng shui without the proper training, you, you freak out because you started placing stuff and things started going the other way that you were hoping for, right? That means something happened. That was a wrong placement. So what I'm doing here is the most diluted, the safest route that I can feel comfortable sharing with you guys so that none of you guys are going to do this and you go into bankruptcy. <laughs> you, might, you might lose a couple of opportunities, but it's not something that's going to put you in like it's not going to deep six your relationship or like put your business into trouble. Okay. So bear that in mind. This is like the tip of the iceberg in terms of activating, but at least it's something. Okay. Something is better than nothing. All right. So plants for uh, wealth. So I'm going to show you an example. Oops. Where is, where is my chart here? Okay. All right, here we go. So here you see is a layout of like an office building, okay? I will remind you guys again of this, but we're not gonna do this in a bedroom. No plans in a bedroom. Okay, I've already mentioned in previous live streams why we don't generally like plants in the bedroom. The gist of it is you don't want, at night especially, which is when you're sleeping, you don't want the plants to be competing for the chi, right? Fine, if you have your kids sleeping with you, your pet or your partner, but you're not, you really want to minimize other life forms uh, competing for the chi with you. So... This is the basic um, wealth direction, or you know, in Chinese we call Tai Wei. Oh, actually, let me do it in Photoshop. Sorry. Okay. So over here, you you can look at it room by room. Okay. So let's say if this is your office and you have your door here, right? So the idea that the wealth corner is, what's the term perpendicular? Or basically it's the corner across from where the door is, okay? So this in a very, very, very basic form is your Tai Wei, your, um, your wealth uh, direction for this room, okay? What about if the door is in the middle of, of, of the wall? Then in that case, it will be here and it will be this corner as well, okay? And for this one, it will be over here. This one, it will be over here. Uh, there's no door on here and there's no proper door, but if these are walls, and not just cubicles, then this would be this guy, whoever sits here and whoever sits here. This needs to be proper wall though, okay? So that the chi is contained. If it's just cubicle and they're like four or five uh, foot in height, 
then this there's nothing to contain the chi here, okay? And then, um, and let's say this being the whole company, right? Let's say the whole company is here, and this being the door, then for the whole company layout, this, sorry, <laughs> this would be the one here. So this is like a conference room, right? This is the meeting room, so that, that would work well. Um, now, there are caveats in that the chi needs to be able to stay. So if there is a window here, I'm going to use a different color for the window. Okay. This is, again, I'm going to say this, this is for like the newbie feng shui people, okay? That you don't know Flying Star, that you don't know Shen Kong Dakwa, you don't know Chi Man Dun Jia then this is the one that you can do. However, if this is your wealth corner and there is a window here, um, then the wealth here is actually, it can't stay because especially if you open the window, then the chi disperses, right? That's no good. What if, uh, what if let's say there is a, let's do a door here. Okay, so this conference room has two corners across from the door, right? But between this, let's say A and then B, between A and B, I would do the A because there's a door here and when the door is opened, like when people come through the door, again, the chi here disperses. The money energy here is weakened. So uh, you would activate here, okay? And in my, because today we're talking about uh, feng shui and plants, and also because I want you guys to do this in the safest way possible, because DIY feng shui can really land you into hot water. And I know many of you guys have come to me saying so right, that you freaked out after you did DIY feng shui, how you activate these money corners is with plants, okay? And I'll talk about the kind of plants that I, uh, I, I would suggest to, um, to do this. Do not activate with water. Do not, like, please do yourself a favor. Don't think, oh, water brings me money in feng shui, not all the time. The wrong placement for water has, uh, and I've seen this, the wrong placement of water has uh, had people losing their jobs within like a month uh, or their business started struggling. And I've seen uh, people who had to um, declare bankruptcy. And I know this because in the having done feng shui consulting for the past decade or so, I would go into a house and if I see a water feature in the southeast and after I do my compass reading, I know why they had to claim bankruptcy. Because fast food feng shui tells you activate with water and the water and the money uh, energy or the money corner is in the southeast. And people DIY it, they put the water there and livelihood gone. Okay. So do not, when I talk about activating with these corners here, we do it with plants. You will get results. It won't be as fast, but at least you will, it's an insurance that you're not going to uh, inadvertently activate something different. And why, and what would lead you to um, accidentally trigger something different? It could be other energy that is specific to your home. It could be the flying star, right? It could be other um, uh, other factors. So for the purpose of activating these corners, you guys, we are only using plants, okay? Um, so that's the first one. That's basically that's basically it <laughs> in terms of using uh, using uh, plants to activate for um, for pros uh, financial prosperity. Just look at where the door is, 
for the room. Again, do not do this for the bedroom. So your office would be great, especially with people working at home right now. If you're working off of uh, from the living room or the dining room, then you look at where the entrance is. And again, what, what if you have an, uh, uh, an open floor plan? And I've mentioned this before, for a fun, in the feng shui perspective, um, open floor plans are a nightmare because you cannot contain the chi. You cannot manipulate the chi. Everything is all over the place, right? So if, you're, if you have an open floor plan, you don't have a door that goes into the room that you're working in, then you're kind of out of luck, okay? Because there's no... Uh, the door is where you can determine the quality of the chi that comes into the room. So sure, open floor plans look great aesthetically, but in terms of feng shui perspective, it's not, it's, it's more, more hassle than it's worth. Okay. Uh, let me just check on questions. Oh, this is a good one. Does the same apply for fake plants in a bedroom? No. Why? We're activating for money and relationships, right? Later on, we'll talk about relationships. For this one, you need live plants because you want the money to grow. Do you want fake money? Do you want monopoly money? No. So you can't use fake plants. Not for money sense, okay? So that's that's a good one. Thank you. Sorry, I forgot to uh, mention that. Uh, if ah, if the cubicle is six feet tall, then yes, it would still be better if it's an actual wall, then the chi is more contained. But if it's minimum six feet tall, it's usable. It's not great, but it's usable. Oh, I got this ready for you guys. So since you were talking about that, George. Um, where is, sorry guys, I can't see where my, <laughs> okay, I still need to get used to this, oh, okay, mm. I'll talk about that in a minute. All right, and other questions. Is it best placed in stagnant chi? Putting a plant in stagnant chi, it can work. Um, stag I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about no window and no door beside where the corner is. Um, it, it, it can work, okay? Mary, so out of luck if the window is in the wealth corner, uh, kind of. So hopefully you have other options to maybe a different room. Okay. Um, all right. So we'll talk about plants in a minute. I've got a few examples for you guys. So just hang tight. I do have that. Okay. So now the next one is plants for relationships. Um, and this one goes back to the term in, in, in the Chinese language, Tao Hua Yun. Tao Hua is peach, right? Or peach blossom specifically. And Yun is luck. So peach blossom luck. And peach blossom being a plant, <laughs> then typically we also activate with the wood element. So there are two types of peach blossoms. There's a personal peach blossom, which is what we're going to cover today because again, it doesn't work 100%, but something is better than nothing. And there's also the your home's uh, heavenly romance direction. Um, I will just touch on it here, but because it is a little bit more in-depth, uh, I will tell you where you can go for additional information later. Okay, so your personal peach blossom, let me make sure I have 
So for personal peach blossom, you look at the year that you are born, okay? So if you're born in the year of the monkey, rat, or dragon, and you guys can take a screenshot of this if you want. If you're born in, so, Sun Zi Chen, Sun Zi Chen, okay? Monkey, rat, or dragon is the year that you're born, then your personal peach blossom direction is the West, okay? Uh, and the elements, so you're gonna see like in brackets here, the elements that you want there is earth or metal. Be really careful with earth and metal, actually. Okay. Um, you don't want it to, actually this, for 2021, most of you guys would be okay. There will be certain facings that earth and metal might, might come into an issue, but this is a smaller placement, so hopefully you'll be okay. So earth and metal, sorry, I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> Then you need seven or eight stalks of plants. So these need to be freshly cut flowers, you guys. It won't be cheap. You cannot use fake plants for this. Okay? So seven or eight stalks. Uh, and if you want to go a little bit further in terms of like the vase, you can either use like a ceramic vase or a, a metal vase. Okay? Or if you can't do the actual element, then you can do the color either um, like a brown uh, flower pot or a metal flower pot, okay? Like right here, I actually have my orchid in a metal flower pot, okay? For, for areas that need more metal. And so if your peach blossom is in the West, then you do seven or eight stalks of flowers. Again, freshly cut, preferably if they're still in bud so that it has time for it to kind of open up. The moment they start withering, you need to throw them out. So if you have a flower garden, you're in luck. But if you guys have to buy this in the flower store, it can add up. Okay. If you're born in the year of the tiger, horse, or dog, yin wu shi, then your, um, your personal peach blossom direction is in the east. And you use wood or water as the preferred element. So... Um, maybe like a wooden pot. There are actually wooden pots. I have one right here. Although it's to put my incense, right? You can use this. Although it will leak a little bit, but there are wooden pots. Um, and obviously there's no water pots, but you can do, and we'll talk about that. Oh, oh actually I have this right here. Ah, You can do water culture. Some of you, no, this is not fresh anymore. It's a few months old. But I actually um, have some of my orchids in water. There's no soil in here. They're growing out of water. So for, for directions that can take more water element, then I do my water culture orchids there. Okay? Uh, and then you can put one or four stalks. And then if you're born in the year of the snake, rooster, or ox, then uh, so si, si yu to, um, your personal peach blossom direction is in the south. And, you, and the element that you want is fire or wood and, or color. Okay, some of you guys already know what elements are related to what color. And uh, you go for four or nine stalks of flowers. Pig, rabbit, sheep. Okay, hi, my way. Uh, then your um, peach blossom direction is in the north. And the element that you want is water or metal, either the actual element or the color. And then you go for one or seven stalks of flowers. And again, as a reminder, this is based on the animal sign of the year you are born. Okay. So that's, uh, that's based on... Oh, I should say this. Because Stella, thank you for that. 
Activating for peach blossom, in my opinion, should only be done for single people. If you are in a committed relationship, whether you're married or not, but you have a boyfriend uh, or girlfriend and you want to get married, I actually wouldn't activate the peach blossom even then. Okay? Because sometimes too much of a good thing can be an issue. So peach blossom, when actually activated too much, i.e. you're already in a committed relationship, that could actually bring in uh, a third party. Now peach blossom, so that's the thing. You don't know when you put, when you activate it too much. The only way for you to know is when you actually start seeing the negative results. Because technically peach blossom, you can also use if you're a business person that you get like, um, good good following from or have a good relationship with your clients and your vendors and your suppliers right uh, or if you're in marketing peach blossom is good as well or if you're let's say you're an actor uh or you're in public you're like a public figure and you want people to like adore and follow you on social media or whatever peach blossom is actually a good energy to tap into but and here's a big but and i can't tell you when is it too much I'll tell you when it's too much is when you're already starting to see, um, un, you know, uh, the, the results that you don't want to see. That's when you know it's too much. Um, so that's the thing. I Personally, I only activate peach blossom um, when, when you're single. And when I do an in-depth consultation with my client, if there is potential for affairs or being cheated in their chart, and they're single, I don't even activate that. So again, like I said earlier, there's so many different layers to look at, but but you just need to be aware and just have your external eyes and your inner eyes. Just keep watch to see what happens after you do these placements, okay? So thanks for, for that reminder there, Stella. And for 2021, um, and those of you who register in Feng Shui 2021, you know I told you guys not to put plants in the east next year, uh, especially if you're in a relationship, because it can bring in, <coughs> excuse me, it can bring in the third party. Okay. Um, so... You're going to see the plants uh, that I have for you guys. They're not stocks because I'm not activating peach blossom. <laughs> My husband and I, we're, we're going 18 years. I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize that. Um, my plants are actually full plants with roots and stuff, right? Um, that one you can use for activating for well. But if you want peach blossom, it is, to be honest with you guys, the flower is and optional in terms of the peach blossom activation. It is more the vase. It is more the vase and or, or the, um, the plant itself. So we like wide mouth rings like this, okay? So that the chi can collect there. We do not like vases where, I don't even have any to show you. We don't like the vases where the, the, the opening is small. That defeats the purpose. You want the chi to collect in there. And the, the plants are really just the additional, you know, boost, if you want. But really, it's the vessel, it's the flower container or the vase or the flower pot that is the more important thing here. It's to have that chi collect in that specific direction. Okay. This one, in terms of, you can do it in, so personal peach blossom, you can put it in a room if you want. But personally for me, I find that the larger, like putting it in the south of the whole house tends to be um, stronger than putting it in the room. 
But again, if it's a bedroom, you can't put live plants in a bedroom, Christina. Remember that, right? Yeah. So then you have to do it in the main, in the main, um, based on the whole layout. All right. So let me keep going because, oh, shoot, I have 15 minutes left. <laughs> All right. So, um, and there is also the Holmes Heavenly Peach Blossom direction. And I don't have, I'm not going to go over that in this live stream because it's definitely a little bit more involved than what I just showed you guys. Um, but you can go to bit.ly. Mm. bit.ly heavenly romance feng shui you can register for it's something that i currently have on right now okay so that's the link bit.ly heavenly romance feng shui let me make a thing here okay if you go on that link, you're going to see that um, this calculates the heavenly romance star direction based on the 24 mountains of your home. Okay, again, you need to make sure that you get the right facing. Those of you who are not familiar with classical feng shui, just Google 24 mountains to kind of get a better idea of what it means. but this heavenly romance star is calculated based on the sitting of your house okay so once you get the facing right then you know what the sitting is which is directly 180 degrees opposite on the compass the heavenly romance star is not based on eight mansions it's not based on your core number it's not based on your astrology it is based on the house itself okay so uh, it is $39. It's a one-time payment if you want to take that, uh, that training. I believe it's a two-hour training that I've already pre-recorded. Uh, you'll get the downloadables. You get the, you get the video. So if you want, go to bit.ly forward slash heavenly romance feng shui, and that's going to take you uh, to my page where you can register for that training. Okay, It's pre-recorded, so it's not, it's not like a live thing but you get all the information you need there, okay? Now, the plants that have more significance in feng shui and Chinese culture. First is the golden pothos. I actually have one, but it's downstairs. So I forgot to bring it up. In Chinese, it's called huan jing ge. Uh, you, will, you will see the Chinese culture. It's all about the name <laughs> most of the time. Something is considered auspicious or whatever because it's given an auspicious name. So Huan Jing, Huan Jing is gold, right? Yellow gold. So golden pothos. Um, oh, actually, I have a picture that I think I can show you guys. If you guys want to know how it looks like here. Yeah, that's how that looks like. Okay, so that's the golden pothos, um, and then there's the jade plant. I don't have a jade plant here, uh, but there's also the pilea, and I'll tell you why it's considered. They're considered. Uh, I'm gonna hide under the pot so you guys can see. My camera has eye tracking. That's why if it sees my eyes, it's gonna focus on my eyes. Um, <laughs> So this is Pilea peperomides or peperomides. I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, and if you look at the jade plant as well, these look like coins, right? And that's why in the Chinese society, they look like you're growing coins, you're growing money. Okay, it's, it's very symbolic, a lot of these things. And uh, so succulents are great as well. So there's like string of pearls, string of hearts, anything that kind of, um, well, not cactus. We don't like cactus because of the thorns, but succulents are also because they, they hold on to things, right? They hold on to, they have a water reservoir. Um, so that's considered auspicious. There's the adenium um, rose, 
Adinium obesum. Sorry, this is the desert rose. Uh, this is the only one that I have, and I bought it because it reminds me of my mom. But in Chinese, it's called fu kui hua. And fu kui means wealth and prosperity, pretty much. And this is a baby plant. Like my mom's plants, they're like humongous. And um, they like, and if you guys, like they, they have beautiful pink and white and red flowers. The bigger the, the bark or whatever, the tuber, I guess. I don't know what it's called, this part. But the bigger the base is, it's considered the more auspicious it is. Okay, Fu Kui Hua. Um, and then there are pitcher plants. I don't have pitcher plants, but it's obviously a very tropical thing. Not everyone can uh, can grow pitcher plants. But those of you guys in the tropical areas, it's bas it's like it's shaped like a pitcher, and it collects. You know, it it's got sap or whatever, and it attracts mosquitoes and all the bugs in the forest, right? <laughs> But it's considered auspicious because it has that reservoir, okay? And it attracts, even though it's it's stinky and it, it attracts bugs, it is generally considered auspicious because uh, the, it looks like a pouch as well. The picture itself looks like a pouch. And citrus trees. Citrus trees are also considered auspicious because if you look at lemon trees or especially like uh, kumquat trees or calamondin trees, I actually have a yuzu tree right in front of me, and I have a Meyer lemon tree in my uh, living room, but they're too big. I can't, I can't bring them in front of the camera. But those citrus, symbolically, they look like you're growing gold, right? Like gold nuggets on the plants. So that's why in Chinese New Year, you usually see um, most Chinese homes have like those calamondin or those uh, kumquat trees, because it's like you're growing gold. Again, it's symbolic. You don't have to use these for feng shui, okay? I'm just giving you, uh, giving you insight on what the Chinese, like culturally, what is considered more auspicious, okay? My favorite are orchids. Anyone who knows me <laughs> knows I am a plant addict, but especially an orchid addict. Uh, so I have, I've already shared with you guys this one. But I want to share with you guys another one, um, actually four of them, that is generously shared by Roehampton Orchids. My friend, my friend Andrew and his partner over at RoehamptonOrchids.ca. So these are jewel orchids. Uh, I was trying to figure out the Chinese name. It's Jing something. It's like gold something. But these are jewel orchids, and they are highly, highly sought after. This little baby, this is Ludicia discolor dragon fire. Can you see the veining? It's really, it's a baby. But that's dragon fire. I just... Andrew just delivered them yesterday. I can't stop looking at them because the leaves are just, those of you guys who like variegated leaves, these are, you're going to go down a rabbit hole with jewel orchids. Okay, look at those beautiful leaves. And I like, and some plants, the problem with some plants for feng shui is sometimes they take, they use, they need a lot of soil. And especially if you have number five and number seven, which is strengthened further by earth, i.e. soil, then I wanted plants that have a soilless solution. So I can do my orchids in, in bark, right? Tree barks or coconut husk. Uh, I grow some of my orchids in water and these guys are in moss. So they're wood element, right? So even though like my office, which is also my plant room, has lots of, uh, I have probably 50 plants in here. I only have one, two, three, four, five plants that have soil. So my earth element from my plants are actually very, very minimal considering the amount of plants that I've got. Uh, let me show you two more. This one's a little bit larger, so you should be able to see. <gasps> Look at, oh, okay, hold on. Look at those leaves. Oh. One more. You're going to see me. Rohamptonorchids.ca. Uh, I will uh, 
I've known Andrew for, I don't know, like close to two years now. Many of my orchids are from him. He gets like really high quality. He takes care of them really, really well. And uh, he ships, he still ships year round if you're in Canada. I'm gonna hide my eyes so the camera doesn't track me. Can you guys see that? Oh my God, that gold, that golden vein in the center. Jing, gold. Okay, this one is Siamensis hybrid. And they're, they're, because they're babies, that's why they're in a little cup like this, so that they have the humidity and everything. But yeah, check out my amazing friends, RoehamptonOrchids.ca. Um, and let me know if you buy orchids from them. I want to I wanna know what you bought. <laughs> I'm going to be nosy and I want to know. All right. Um, okay. So other reasons why I love orchids, okay? One is they last long. Remember about the, uh, the cut flowers? They'll last at the most five days. For me, it's, again, I'm not trying to activate peach blossom. <laughs> but if I were to spend money on plants, I spend the actual, I spend money on the actual plants, not just on cutting. Um, orchids especially, like these guys can bloom for three months. This is actually the end of the bloom already. A lot of the flowers have already come off. But they can bloom for months on end. That's another reason why I like that. Um, so if you end up uh, doing the Heavenly Romance direction, for instance, try to get plants like orchids, for instance, that are still in bud, right? So that it slowly opens up so that you're, you're attracting budding romance, budding relationship, right? Again, it's more symbolic, but that's what you want, okay? Um, and another reason why I love orchids, I mentioned before, is most of them, they don't need soil. Actually, I don't know many orchids that actually take soil. Most of them are terrestrial or uh, epiphytes and all that. So they, they live on wood, water, moss, okay? And they're gorgeous. Like, I really don't have a lot of orchids that are in bloom right now. Oh, I do have one. But it's in my kitchen window, so I'm not going to grab it for you at the moment. Okay. So, um, and remember, no plants in the bedroom, okay? Now, one more thing to also remind you guys, I know I'm doing a lot of like caveats here, but only because I don't want people to say, oh, feng shui didn't work for me. It did not work because there are potential for um, other factors that make it, not as successful for you, right? So what are the other factors? Where is my Photoshop? Oh. Hold on, you guys. I'm just dealing with, oh, okay. The other factors in terms of how successful you can be in using these very, very diluted, very, very generalized, uh, plant placements for wealth and for a relationship is this one here, okay? Three types of energy, you guys. There's heaven energy, man energy, and earth energy, right? Tian di ren, or tian ren di, however you want to call it. Heaven energy is your astrology, your past life, your karmic death, your ancestral energy okay man energy is our actions our decisions our self-sabotage our decisions um i said decisions already but um in terms of relationships our self-worth our self-love our self-confidence right earth energy is feng shui so placing something based on the peach blossom is just one third of this and that is with you doing like a very diluted method, right? A very generalized method. You can activate for peach blossom, but let's say man energy is blocking you, right? Someone is asking you out and you're like, you're all of a sudden you're freaking out, right? Or, oh, maybe you're, you're newly divorced and you, you haven't been on the dating scene for 20 years and you're like all freaking out and you're like, no, I don't want to go out 
I can't go out with you. It's more your mankind luck. You're, you're the one blocking that, right? And many of us, we say we want money, we say we want love, but there are actually subconscious fears and worries around having money, around having love, that is, and this is where the law of attraction comes in, that actually blocks the potential for wealth and relationship from us, right? So you can do all the feng shui you want, you can do the earth energy, but if your man energy is blocking you, you're still kind of swimming upstream, okay? Um, and then there's heaven energy as well, right? Um, if astrologically, if there's no money in your chart, if there is no uh, love in your chart, does that mean you're doomed? No. It does mean you're more challenged in those departments, right? So if any of these, you have a blockage, then what do you do? Then you try as best as you can to make sure that you got two thirds of, you know, of uh, the, the, the other levels of energy. Okay. It needs to be holistic. I don't want you guys to think that just because you're doing feng shui that you're life is 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 going to change 180 degrees i i compare and and i observe the ones who come to me only for feng shui and the one who come to me and they work with their heaven energy and their man energy uh, sorry yeah heaven and their mankind energy they get better results why because they're not just working on the one third they're filling their manifesting tank as full as they possibly make it is it a lot of work? Yes. But is it worth it? Yes. Okay. So that's what this is where I want to leave you guys with. And it's really, really, really important. Um, I know there's additional questions, but I do really need to get going. Um, but comment under the video or uh, either on Facebook or on YouTube. And I'll, I'll go over the questions there. But I'm afraid I got to be out my house in three minutes <laughs> um, for an appointment. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Great questions. Thank you so much for spending part of your day, your, your day, your evening, and your night with me. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys next year. Have a happy new year and wishing you an amazing 2021 for everyone. Prosperity is out there. It is up to you to make sure that you put yourself in the path of abundance, prosperity, and lots of health uh, and amazing relationships. Take care, everyone. Bye.